Hey, what up fam? It's Ming, and today I'm going to show you exactly how I fish San Luis Reservoir. Let's do it. Alright, so first things first, I'm going to show you what kind of equipment I'm using. And I'm using my Atlas rigs. These are rigs I made myself. Uh, you can get them at some local tackle shops or on my website tacklebuilders.com and these are not your typical umbrella rigs these actually fold and you can store them like in a plano box or I don't know in tubes or whatever so you can bring it up like this flip it upside down you want to turn this so that the uh, notches are in line with the wires screw it down and then it locks it in place and there you go you got yourself a collapsible umbrella rig that opens up all i use at san luis are my umbrella rigs and these work great you'll you'll catch three fish at a time if you're lucky and it mimics a whole school of bait fish that's why it's so effective you cover a lot of water looks like bait fish and you can catch multiple fish at a time so it's a plus plus all the way so i upgraded my uh live scope to an echo map 126 sv uh, and I have the uh, L LVS 34 transducer on and that has increased the quality of my uh, screen a bunch. So if you check that out, there's no fish here of course, but you can see the contour of that uh, hump right there that we're actually on a point right here, main lake point. So when I see some uh, schools or activity down there, um, I'll show you guys exactly what we're seeing. So another piece of equipment that I use a lot when I'm out here are my downriggers. These are Scotty 1106 downriggers. So these swing in and out. I've had these for about, I don't know, four years now. And they work great. I haven't had any issues other than like wear, normal wear and tear. I uh, had to replace a uh, line counter uh, yesterday and they sent the part free of charge uh, I think they have a lifetime warranty on these too so I got two downriggers on each side I'm using a pancake 12 pound pancake ball downrigger ball and these pancake balls work great uh, they cut right through the water uh, they're better than the regular um, round balls um, I think they stay true up to like 80 feet as far as a, a downrigger line upgrade the stainless steel lines to braided line and one more important piece of equipment is my trolling motor i have a Minn Kota tarova and this little baby has autopilot i can just say go straight and it'll stay straight when i'm trolling boat control is very important uh, when i'm back here fishing i don't want to be up there steering the uh, boat i want to be back here fishing and i can just use my remote hit the uh, north is up which means go straight and I'll troll right through the the schools or the the structure the the island whatever it is that I'm trying to fish for with rough water it'll keep me straight it's just as important as the rest of the equipment your fish finder your downriggers uh, that trolling motor it's one of those must-haves so I usually pair my um, atlas rigs with uh, with the Daiwa Wilderness Rod. It's like a seven footer, but when you're fishing on a boat, it's better to have a shorter rod. So I've been using uh, the Ray Raptor Rods. It's a real sensitive rod. It's actually for jigging, but um, they don't make those no more. So I went and got one of these. This is actually my first time trying it out. It's an Akuma Cedros, I believe. Uh, I mean, it's just shorter rod. It's about, I'd say about six feet long. Uh, it has a pretty sensitive tip almost hopefully it's not like an ugly stick too sensitive or too flimsy but uh, so far that raptor rod is pretty good uh, the die wall wilderness rod is pretty good uh, i've caught like literally thousands of stripers on that i've had it for like four or five years now and uh, it, it's actually a great rod so what you want to do first is tie on one of these bigger uh, snap swivels you never want to tie directly onto the atlas rig your, your line's going to get cut so you want to use a snap swivel, snap it on, you get one of those heavier duty ones, and then you're good to go. And um, what I like to do is, I'm going to let out 100 feet of line. 
Usually in the winter time, I like to let out more line. Like right now, it's like January, mid-January. So it's still kind of the winter bite. There you go, it's about 100 feet. So when you put your ball down, don't just drop it. You're gonna slam on your downrigger and it might even snap at the base. So you wanna just swing it like a pendulum. Swing it in and you're good to go. That's how you drop your ball down. If you uh, switch it to on, it'll stop on its own. All you gotta do now is uh, clip it on right here. These are Scotty clips, but if you want braid, you have to upgrade to like 80 pounds just so that the clips will hold on to it better. And these are equivalent to like 30 pound line, 30 pound mono line. There's a bunch of fish on the bottom. So I got one rig at 65 feet and this rig at like 20 feet. But check this out, there's some shallow and these guys are about to hit my, uh, oh, got fish on already. Okay, there's a fish on the rig that's on the bottom, but there's a bunch of fish still. So I'm gonna leave it on and see if these stripers uh, hit. Another school, master school, I, got, I think I got two. I got two now. I got two, let's see if I can get three. The school's still there, the school is still there. I see three fish on there. These are nice looking fish too. Okay, there's a third one coming up. Okay, no takers, so I'm gonna reel it up before I lose them both. Oh, nice ones. These, oh yeah, diff oh, there's a third one, three! I got, oh dang it, I lost that third one. There's a third one, he was at 30 feet and he came and hit it. Oh my goodness, almost had it. Almost had three. Ah, okay, let's see how big these guys are. Two nice ones. And you can see that, uh, oh, dang. That third swim bait's all messed up from that uh, third striper. Almost had three fatties on. <laughs> Check that out, guys. Check that out. Almost had a triple. I mean, he hit it short strike. I even had the stinger hook on. Look at it, it's all bent. Bent out of shape. The bite is pretty good right now. All right, I'm gonna get a fish here. Got a chaser right there. All right, let's see here. Oh, there it goes. Big school. We're gonna catch multiple fish here. Both rods, that rod, that rod just went off. I'm gonna see if I can get more. This one just went off. Check that one out. Oh my God, that one's going off too. And the school's still there, so I gotta let it run through the whole school before I pull any up. Oh my goodness. Okay, that school just passed, so I'm gonna go ahead and reel this one in. Oh, this guy's a fighter. This is a good size one. Good size striper. Okay, and the other rod, they're still hammering it like crazy. Actually, that's probably a 19 inch or just looks small. Yeah, it's about the same size. Oh, actually, it's a tad bigger. I got a double. Oh my goodness, look at that school. Bunch of fish on here. Oh, yes. Might have three fish on this rod. <laughs> that was a big school I just hit. Three fish triple <laughs> there you go fam <laughs> it's been a while since i got a triple check it out all right so that's pretty much the trip um i fished three locations today i fished the cottonwood area the small dam over there caught a fish and then i fished the uh, portuguese area over there and I caught a lot of fish. Uh, I'd say over 30 plus fish by noon. And then uh, by the dam a little bit uh, near Basalt area. And each location produced. Uh, the most productive for sure is uh, the Portuguese area. And uh, there's just a lot of fish there. And that's typical of the winter bite at San Luis. You want to fish uh, in deep water, uh, muddy flats, uh, like in the Portuguese area, it's it's like that there and luckily the water is high still so you're able to access that whole area and uh, catch fish there. There's a lot of uh, sculpin, uh, grass shrimp, shad swimming around so they're 
the stripers are on the bottom, they're feeding all these uh, bait. So you want to uh, be as close as you can uh, near the bottom. So that's why having downriggers uh, is so important because uh, I was fishing in like 70, 60 to 70 feet of water and I had my rigs around 50 to 55 and the schools would just come and hammer the baits back one after another. It, it was a crazy bite today. And like, I mean, every day is a different bite, but today just for some reason, they were super active. And I caught them in uh, deep water. I'm always, I, I'm usually fishing deep water here. Uh, not a lot of people fish deep water here. Most of the people, I mean, they'll just pound the shoreline, uh, cast some jerk baits and whatnot and uh, see if they can get some shallower uh, stripers, uh, throw some glide baits. I mean, all that stuff works. All that stuff works. Throwing flutes, uh, jigging from the bottom, uh, glide minnows, all that stuff works. But one thing that's consistent here is uh, you gotta keep moving. And the best bait for that is uh, Atlas Rig. So it looks like a school of uh, shad rolling through. They see that and they'll hammer the swim baits right there. So that's why I like using the Atlas rigs when I'm uh, fishing here at San Luis. Helps you cover a lot of water, troll at two and a half miles an hour with the rigs about 50 feet back behind the boat. And uh, just hit all the spots, all the locations. When you find the active fish, I mean, use it as a, a searching rig where you find the schools and then you can just stop and start jigging if you want to. If you want to throw some minnows, once, once you find them, just stop and start throwing minnows or whatever. But Atlas rigs are uh, great searching rigs uh, when you want to find the stripers out here. Alright, so I'm going to fish this channel real quick and uh, if I don't catch anything, I'm just going to call it a day. So a lot of places to fish here. The best way is just to go on Google Earth, find a bunch of locations, uh, get the uh, GPS coordinates and just go to that location. A lot of submerged islands, flats, channels, uh, points whatever just go on google earth and find a good looking spot pinpoint it and use your uh, fish finder to uh, uh, find that spot fish it doesn't work go on to the next spot and that's pretty much probably the best advice i can give you for fishing san Luis. find some spots keep moving from spot to spot and uh just keep moving around all right guys i'm out till next time